In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a thick border the moment we hover on top of a line here. And you can see here, the moment we do this and when we move away from it, it goes back to into the original shape. And you will see that this is the only one that matches nicely with this and the tooltip itself will stay in its original shape. So let's start to explore how we can do this. In this video, we'll answer one of the viewers question, which is how to change the line thickness on Hoover on the line chart in ChartJS. And this question came from one of my other videos about how to change the border color and add annotation line on Hoover in ChartJS. And if you scroll down, you will see this question came from Nick Yovchenko. So a special thank you to Nick Yovchenko for asking the question. And this is what Nick asked. Thank you for the info. Is it possible to change the line thickness, which, which he refers here to the border width, on Hoover and return it back when the line is unhoovered. Thanks in advance. All right, so we're going to focus on this and this was slightly more tricky than expected. To start with, with what we need here is first the default code. So make sure you go to chartjs3.com, getting started, and then in here, we're going to copy this chunk of code here. So once you copy this, and if you want to understand this chunk of code, make sure you watch this video here. And by the way, you might notice this here. For some reason, I get this error here only on Google Chrome. Anyway, let's continue on. We will paste this in here. And once we paste that chunk of code in there, I'll just move the title here, save this and refresh. There we are. So once we have this, the next thing what we need to do now is to convert it into a line chart. And what I want to do here to make sure that it's clear we have multiple lines. So what we're going to do here is uh, convert this into a line chart. And then what I will do here is I will copy this. And here I put a comma and comma paste again. So we paste it two more times and then we just grab here a certain color that will be the line color for the background color but also for the border color and we'll make sure that this is alpha value one so it's a solid color and we can say this is the red color or red line. Next one here let's get another one which is this is the black line so we just put it here and put it in there. Make sure this is number one, and then we say hit the black line. Final one here, let's get the green line, which is the fourth color here. And just put it in there, put that one in there, and then we say this is one. Make sure we have all these commas here. And here we have the border width. The border width by default is three, but we will be needing this, so make sure you put this in here. This is very important. So once we have this here, and then I'll just say a green line. Once we have all of this here, I'll just get some random colors here. Let's say 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. And then here, we can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And finally, once we have, this one is fine, so we can just leave that one in there. So once we have this, we save this, refresh, there we are. So now we have these lines here, beautiful. What we might be able to do is here to, to, to make it like um, a more curved line, so we can do a tension here. We don't have to do tension in here, but we can do a tension in here. You say in the options, there is a tension, 0 0.4 comma. And if we do this, save that, refresh, you can see here now this works all nicely. It will affect every one of those. Of course, you might not notice here anyway. Well, if we change this, let's make this uh, 7 and save that. Then you might notice here we have a nice curve. All right, so we have this here now. What we need to do is a few things. We need to work with the Hoover effect. And this specific question with Hoover effect is slightly more tricky than I personally had expected, but it is possible. So let's start to work on it. What we're going to do here is we're going to use first here the Hoover effect, which is a built-in command. It's on Hoover with capital H. And then we say here event. And then we have here comma chart element. And then here expression arrow or expression arrow function. And then what I want to do here first of all is make sure we have a comma here and display or console log the event and the chart element. So we hear another console log, and the reason why is so you have understanding what the response is. 
So we have this here, save that, refresh, there we are, open up developer tab. Then once we hover over it, or you already can see, if you hover over it, we can see we get the coordinates here of the event. So this is very important. And then here, you might see this, but maybe it's hard to, to spot, so I'm going to save this. When we get here, let's see. This is the coordinates of the event, all right? So we have that one. Now get the chart element. So the chart element you see, basically it shows nothing, but the moment we hover over this, you will see here down, we start to get something. So if I refresh, you might notice it better. See here now, all right? So this means you basically recognize that we're hovering over something, and then it grabs here the uh, data points. And that's very, very important here, because basically with this, we can now start to play around. But what we really need here is only this specific item, the data uh, data set index. This is the most important one because we need to know on what data set are we hovering on top of. This is very important because here you might see here with the uh, border width, but we are not for some reason, I'm not able to trigger this one to update because it will not update, it will only update basically the hover effect, but nothing else. So this means that, that is, this is not possible. So we have another way to do that. So this is very important to remember. So, all right, let's start to work on that. So what I want to do is first is to say, if chart element has a length of zero, if that is the case, then we should be basically, it would mean that we are hovering on top of a line. So let's say you console log and say here, yes, save that and refresh. And if you move over, you can see here, let's see, yes, there we are. So maybe I can even hide this one. You will see it more clearly. Let's see, yes. And then here again, and then here, nothing. And there you are, yes. We should see here as well. Yes. And yes. All right. So it recognizes when we hover. This is a very important point because once it recognizes that it's hovering, on top of an item, we can now continue on. And what I need now is basically here to get the chart element of what we're hovering on. Specifically here, the chart element zero. So refresh and go back here. All right, so you can see here now what we get is we get the index data and the index value itself, which would be here four, because this is zero, one, two, three, four. Remember, these are the data points. And here this is the index number. So what we really want to do is we want to pinpoint if we are on index, uh, data set index one or zero, that's this line, then this line needs to increase in thickness. And then the same here with the other. So with this information here, we can now start to see on which item we're basically hovering on top. So that's what we're going to grab here now. So we say hit dot. And then what we want to grab here is this. If I save this now, refresh, you can see here we get the value number two, and this is number one, all right? So you can see number one apparently is the black line, which is correct, this is the second element, so index one, and this is the green one, is the third element, which would be index number two. So it shows it all nicely. So with this now, we have to do something else, and but we cannot do it in here. So this would mean we're going to now use a function for this. So I'm going to say a thick line function, and this tick line function is basically a function that we're going to put in here down. And in this function, we call it tick line, we will make the line tick, which, which makes sense, of course. So what we're going to do in here is basically this. I need parameters here. And the parameter that I need is this specific item, because I need to know which data set index that we hover on top of. So we want to make sure we have this. We're going to copy this and put it in here. So that will be the first value that we have. The other value will be another item, which is basically the thickness. So in this case, I assume the thickness is a, a value which is a steady value here. So let's say number seven. The default is three. So if you hover over, it should be thickened by uh, seven pixels. So it will be almost twice, it will be twice and a little bit more in size. So this is very important. So with this, we can now start to work here and all we can say here is the following. We can say here the data set index, which is basically this one here. And the other one would be the thickness. So we have this one here. Oh, that's not number seven, but uh, we can call this the line thickness. So once we did this, 
we can do here console log and just make sure you can see it we're going to say here uh well let's grab here the thickness and then also or well let's get instead of the thickness let's get this one, the data index so you will see now that we're moving the value from here into this function now so save this refresh now you can see here zero as you can see we're not anywhere console log out here but it's just in here so it recognizes this we can just see here this is i'll just put a text here this is thick line function save this refresh hover there we are so you can see it understands that we're hovering on top of the night here using this specific function so once we did this basically what we can do now is to start giving it a thickness so what we're going to do is the following here we can say here my chart and then dot config. So why my chart and dot config? Well, let's look at this my chart dot config and then we go here into data and in the data we can go here into the specific data set and then we can pinpoint the border width. This is the reason why we need the border width because we need to pinpoint exactly this place here or else we're going to recognize it or something you might have given error. It might give an error. So that's why we're doing this. So we say data and then data set and then the data set value will be of course based on this data set index that we grab from here and then we say here dot border width and then this border width will be the value of the line thickness all right so once we did this then we say here my chart dot update and once we update this we can save this now and refresh. So then we have one part done, but we are not done yet. As you can see, it becomes thick, but it doesn't undo it yet. Here it becomes thick, and here it becomes thick as well. So you might notice the tooltip, or the tooltip we're able to solve. For this one, I will do a slight adjustment so we can play around with it, but we're not able. For some reason, this is always connected with each other. This always becomes thick. So that's the only one that's a slightly tricky one. Anyway, let's continue on. Because right now we have this, but what happened if we hover away, then what we want to do is we want to trigger the function again, except now undo whatever we did. So how do we do this? Well, basically same thing here. We can say here else and else is the following. We're going to say here, if there's no chart element, in that case, we will say here the following. You say tick line will be this. And uh, what we're going to do here we're going to do here let me double check quickly here what we need to do because we have to we cannot use a specific item because this here we're not able to understand this here this is the problem here we're not able to grab this value if we're outside of the hoover so we need to do here something else so what we're going to do here is let's see is the following we're going to say here because basically if there's not in the array we just say here minus one so what we're going to do is we're going to move down the value of minus one and then we say here the thickness will be three and that will eventually be used so with this meaning that three is going back to the original thickness then in here we can also start to apply a function here so what we're going to do here is just an if statement and this if statement will be if uh, index data set index is larger than minus one remember y minus one or is larger or equal to zero that we can do that as well so everything below is minus one and that is this trigger here so if it is true that it's zero or beyond in that case you want to have this item here put it in there and then what we want to do is here another else function because if this is not the case, what will we do? Well, in that case, we're going to grab this. And then we want to do something here. And I, what I will do is here, because we cannot get the value here. But I want to loop through all of these, because basically all of them should be then reset to number three. So what we're going to do here is use an array map functionality. So we say here, in this, we say the data set. So that, will, that way I can surpass this data set issue here so i'm going to remove this and what i want to say here is the following data sets dot map and dot map will loop through every data set we have 
So then what we will say here is the following is this parentheses. And let me say here for every data set, what we're going to do here is basically this. We will loop through this. We say data set. And this data set is just this here basically is a shorthand for this here. And all we say here is then data set border width of every data set that we have will be equal to thickness or to the line thickness. And the line thickness, if it is minus one, will be set on three, which is the original state here. That's basically what we're going to do here now. So if we save this now, refresh, let's look at it. If we hover over it, all right, and we're away. There we are. You can see here now it starts to work. And there we are. And go back here. And there we are. All right. So we have this now. What I want to do here, because you can see this is slightly ugly, and this here is also definitely not appealing. I'm going to show you a trick how we can solve some of it, but we cannot solve this one, sadly enough. So anyway, what I'm going to do to make it at least a bit more consistent with each other, we're going to give it all a very nice uh, point style. So in here, in the options, make sure we have this, options, tension, scales. All right, we can just do it after that. Still in the options, but at the end of the scales, we're going to say plugin or plugins. And here we can say the legend. And what I do with the legend is at least to give this a proper design. So we say here in the legend, we're going to say here the labels. And in the labels, we'll say here, use point style, which will be true comma and then here what we're going to do is point style basically i'm going to change the design that we have and we put it into a circle so that's the string value save this refresh so now you can see we have now circle shapes and i was hoping this would overrule this but you can see it doesn't although this might look a slightly bit more appealing of course if we have circles here we should also have them in the tooltip and in the tooltip we can luckily solve it by overruling it with the point style so we don't have these tick borders on the tooltip. So let's do this one next, which is the tooltip. And in the tooltip, we're going to say here the following. Use point style. We set this on true. And then we say here the point style will be, well, guess what? Of course, a circle as well. Comma here, save this, refresh. Now you can see here, if you hover over it, the point style will stay very nicely with no no effect on the, the tooltip itself. So this is a very good one. Sadly enough, this doesn't work. Why? I do not know. I guess they build it in somehow. However, this is the way how you can give a line thickness on your chart here. So if you like this video, and maybe you want to even go deeper in, for example, with the tooltips, I have another video that shows you how to color coordinate your tooltip eventually with one of these items here or whatever the line will be so that would be also a nice one that if you want a blue tooltip or a red tooltip you hover over the red line it becomes red and if you hover over the green line it will become green so you can watch this video as well which is how to color the tooltip based on the line color in chart.js